Folks have had some subscribers request that I do maybe some beginner Premier Pro CC lessons. I've done some things sort of like this with the CS6 version in the past. I tend to get lengthy with these. I'm going to try to keep these very short and systematic. And uh, you know, not give you a lot of stuff that you don't need, but just things that you do need to get started and uh, making some professional looking video uh, without a whole lot of uh, you know having to jump through hoops. So with that, I'm going to just get right straight into it. When you first open up Premiere Pro CC, I'm, I'm going to assume it, that you've never used Premiere before. You're going to be faced with a with a screen like this. First thing you're going to want to do, you probably won't have anything over here since you haven't done recent items yet, but you want to go to a new project, create a new project. And what it's going to do, it's going to create a project that's going to go into a folder somewhere. And right now I have this uh, a folder here already selected, but I'm going to browse to a folder. I'm going to go to this, I'm in a My Book here that I've bought from Walmart, which is a pretty nice USB 3 drive. I'm going to create a new folder here. So I'm going to just right click, I'm going to say New Folder. It's going to bring a new folder up here. I'm going to call this. Uh, I'm going to call this Premier Pro Training, Premier Pro CC Training. It could be called anything you want it to be called, right? Uh, whatever your name, your project needs to be. We'll say Select Folder. Now, anything that I put in here from this point on is going to be going into that folder, uh, it, but it wants the name of the project. So we're going to call this uh, Premier Pro Training. Once again, it can be called anything you want to. You can call it Tony's Training, whatever. Anyway, here we go. Um, nothing else really right here, right now matters other than, you know, capture format HDV. You're probably, I'm guessing at this point, not going to be doing capture from, uh, maybe if you have an old camera that's, uh, you know, where you have to put a firewire cable into it. That's something that can actually be, we'll address that later, but most people are going to be using video that comes off of cards now or from USB cables offloaded onto their computer, right? So we're assuming now, at this point, you've already got some video on your computer somewhere on your hard drives. Uh, this thing that says Mercury Playback Engine, if you have a computer suitable for that, it's probably going to default to that. Uh, so if you, hopefully you've got a pretty stout computer to do your video editing. Premiere Pro CC will work with, you know, computers that aren't super stout too, but this really helps speed things up when it comes to processing and previewing. So I'm going to say OK. And it's going to fix me up a, uh, a project here. Now this thing's going to come up, up first. You're going to say, what the crap is this? If you've not used this kind of video editing system before, or you're kind of new to nonlinear video editing, this might look a little strange to you. Also, it might come up yours looking a whole lot different. I will tell you, for, for my purposes, this is the old school way that Premiere Pro used to look, like CS5 and before. And I like to go up here to the top where you've got a view. Oh, hang on a second. And, uh, okay. I like to go up here where it says Window and go to Workspace and go to Editing CS5.5. So if you're going to follow me, since I am sort of old school, I suggest you go to this. There are different looks that in different setups and things for Premiere Pro, I just kind of, since I'm old school, I go here to this one. So if you want to kind of follow me, it'll be easier for you to probably go to that CS 5.5 look. So here we are. Now, what are we seeing? Well, first of all, before I try to show you anything, let's talk about, let's get some video into this. Man, let's just jump straight in. On a separate screen over here, I have a bunch of video. So I'm going to pull some video into this. and. Uh, um, here's a Mabry Mill trip that I did. So there's probably some good little clips of the uh, old mill at Mabry Mill. I'm going to pull these in. These were shot probably with a Canon HFS 200. Here's a dog. That looks pretty cool. Uh, here's like the old sluices or something. Let's pull a few of those in. Let's get some GoPro Hero 3 video too. Uh, so I'm going to go here maybe to... Here's my buddy's Jerry's dogs. So here's a, it's a piece of GoPro video. I'm going to pull that in there. It's this little schnauzers are very cute. And let's see what all else I have, might have in here. Here's one of my garden updates. Uh, shooting guns. This probably has some GoPro video in it. I don't even know what I have here, but this is my brother shooting some guns. I just want to show you that basically anything you drag in over here is going to work. I was going to see if it even had some 2K, 2.7K video. I know that my driving in Morganton the other day was 2.7K video. See how this is interesting. Now, you'll, if you shot with a GoPro Hero 3, you might be shooting in 1080p. 1080p video will always show you a little uh, icon here. 
2.7K and 4K, which the Hero 3 will use, uh, won't show up that way because it's a it's a kind of a format that Windows is not recognizing. I'm going to go ahead and pull in a, a little bit of that there. It's 2.7K. The thing that's cool, you'll notice right here right quick that Premiere Pro does recognize it. Premiere Pro is very stout and, and it's uh, very open to different formats. So I think I've got enough video in here to play around with. I'm going to close this. So now we've got some video in here. Well, what happens if you double click on the video? Well, it pops up in this window right here. Now you can drag this a little side here, make this bigger, smaller, whatever you want. Everything kind of fluidly goes back and forth there. This is your preview window. This is where if you want to edit a clip, you can go in here and you can uh, say, you know what, I'd like this this clip to start from this point right here. And you have this thing called mark in. It looks like kind of a parenthesis type thing there. You click on that and that see what happens. This all goes dark, which means it's not used. This goes to sort of a soft gray, and that means it is video you're going to use. And so you're going to fast forward here, and let's say I get to this point here where the old mill is, and I want that video to stop right there, right? I'm going to hit this mark out. This is just the most rudimentary of editing, folks. Now, right now, you have a, it says timeline down here in this bottom window. This is where your sequence goes. Your sequence is where you edit and cut all this video that you're editing, or where you take the video you're editing and you cut it together into a timeline that moves left to right. So you don't see anything on here right now. Well, you got to make a sequence. The way you do that, you click over here in this window again. This is where all your resources are. And you're going to say, File, New, Sequence. Now, alternately, there's different ways you can do it. You can click in here. You can, you can just, I just uh, right-clicked in there, and I can do new sequence. It doesn't matter, folks. I'm not going to try to show you every darn shortcut. You can figure these things out later. I'm not a, a guru here to wow you with all my knowledge of shortcuts. It's going to come up by default, the thing called sequence one. It can be whatever you want. Sequence one is fine. We can just say training one. Okay. Ah. And say, okay. All right, now, question what do these all this mean over here if you know what format you shot in it like for instance i, I shot most of this video in avc hd 1080p and, and if you know what your camcorder shoots in you can tell it that but the thing that's really cool about premiere pro cc is it will automatically detect what kind of video you throw onto the timeline anyway so in, in many cases it doesn't even matter I'm going to go ahead and pretend that it does matter. Let's say you shot with an old camcorder. Most of the old camcorders are DV NTSC. That's that's um, you know usually standard. It's 48 kilohertz. And you look over here at 720 uh, pixels this way and 480 this way. It's what you call 480p video. So if you're working with older files, it's probably going to be that. But you don't have to do this. I mean, I'm just saying it's if you know how where to start from, you're cool to do it. I know that most of the time I am shooting in AVC HD. That's what my, most of my camcorder is shooting in 1080p. Usually I'm shooting 30 frames per second. So I'm going to pick this 1080p 30. It's called Training 1. I say, okay. That's really all there is to it. That's just, I didn't mean to confuse anybody there. Hopefully I didn't. It's really very simple. So now the thing that's kind of cool, you can click on these, these bits of video here. Uh, this was the first piece of video. And I guess that's the one that I'm looking at here. I still, yeah. Here it tells you 463 MTS, 463 MTS. I can look and see that this is 1920 by 1080 video at 2997. That's actually 30p. 30, it's funny that we go by 30p, but it really is 29.97 frames per second. But that's in the video world, but it's call it that. I'm going to pull this down here onto this. Uh, okay, look what happened. I, I must not be set up exactly the right kind of format, but it, it says change sequence settings. I can keep the existing settings or I can change sequence. I'm going to tell it to change sequence settings. Now it knows exactly what <laughs> what kind of video I put on there. Now listen, that doesn't the GoPro is a totally different format, so I'm going to put some GoPro video down here in a minute too. And it really doesn't matter. Premiere Pro will take video of different formats and put it all in the same sequence. So you don't even have to worry so much about that. But now if you'll look, the piece of video that I brought in here has the cuts, just like what I put in here, right? Now let's say I want another bit of video from, from here. Let me, let me go fast forward. I'm, right now I'm back to this. I'm not, I'm not on the timeline. This is this, right? This and this correspond. This and this correspond. So I'm going to go here. You know, maybe I want to show just the tail end of that piece of video. So I'm going to click another in. It changed it. 
and another out right there. I'm going to pull it. Now, Now, if I, if I pull this down here again on the timeline, it still should have that new, see, look, it adopted the new uh, length there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Here's something that's pretty uh, important to see. See how tiny these little pieces of video look here right now. You, you want to be able to see those closer sometimes to make really good edits. You have this little bar that runs across the bottom here. Now on the old, there used to be a slider down here in the old Premiere Pro, but now it's just this bar. You go grab the right button over here and you pull it, and there it stretches everything out where you can see it really good. You grab this little yellow thing here and you can slide across. You can scrub across this video left and right. So. <clears throat> Most of the time, you're going to take it and you're going to pull it in here like this, and, and, and it'll kind of snap up against there. So now I've got this. This it goes. I'm going to hit the space bar here and let it play. And there it jumped. You see my jump cut? <clears throat> well, what if you have 50 pieces of video back behind this? I'm going to go ahead and tell you this trick right now. This is usually something people save for later. Let's say you had this clip, and you know, my gosh, you got this clip behind it, and you got another clip behind that. And you don't want to have to take each individual piece of video and do that, right? You just click in the gray and right click, and you get this thing called Ripple Delete. And it pulls all of them back that way. That's kind of your, one of your pro tips right off the bat that are really going to help you. Ripple Delete. You right click anywhere in this area here. It's pulling back again. Right click, Ripple Delete, boom. And it snaps it back to your, to your edit point. Great little thing to have. So, yeah, that's pretty lame going from here to this to that. So I'm going to take that out, actually. Let's look at this next clip here. Now, I can either go up here and I can go to, I'm using 479 now, so here's 479. You know what, let's use 466. Let's not jump too far here. Let's use this 466. I'm gonna pull it down here on the line. Now, I can go up here and double click on 466 and see the old sleuths. And I can scrub across it and I can put these ins and outs, right, if I want to. Or I can just drag this out where I can see the clip and I can take this thing and I can pull across it. And say, okay, you know what? I want to start right about there. Now I can grab. See, see how if I roll over the end of this, it gives me a little red thing here with an arrow on it, right? I can get to there, left click on it, and pull that over to that point. And I can say, okay, it's so what I've done. I've actually trimmed the video without having to do it here. It doesn't matter whichever way you like the best. Now I'm going to pull back over this way till I find an area. That, okay, eh, that's pretty good right there. You know, I'm going to stop right along in here. I'm going to hit. Now, here's another trick. I'm going to hit the C key. The C, right now, I've just got this pointer. When I come across this thing, it becomes like a slider. But when I get my red line where I want it, where I want it to edit, I'm going to hit the C key. The C key turns this into a little razor-looking thing with a little red thing through it. And when I come here over my edit point where that red line is, it's going to let me cut there. So that's another way you can cut video. I really prefer to cut this way a lot. Now, I'm going to advance forward here. I'm gonna say, okay, now right along in here, I'd like to have that, I'd like to have that video start again. I don't want this piece, so I'm gonna cut this. Now I'm gonna hit my V key, like V is in Victor, and that turns this back into a pointer. Then I can just do this, I'm pointing on, I hit delete, I can do a right click, ripple delete, boom, look at that. I'm gonna go back over here, right click, ripple delete, boom, it moves real fast. So I'm gonna go to this, then I want I want to segue over to this. You know what? I'd actually like I'd like it to start um Zooming in here, so I'm I've changed my mind. I'm going to go back over the end of this clip, and it turns to us that little pull thing again. Now I'm going to ripple delete this again. Now I have what I want. I want to do this cut, then I'm going to zoom in. Now you know what? Uh, these are all what we call jump cuts, fast cuts. Uh, where, where there's no transition. Now this one right here, I think I think it would look nice for this to cross dissolve into this.